Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I am going to break down my favorite day trading strategies step by step. These day trading strategies can be used if you're a total beginner to day trading or you're someone that's just more advanced. I'll visually show you exactly how these day trading strategies work and how to set them up within the Thinkorswim platform. My name is Charles Moon and I'm here to help you become a better day trader today. We're gonna cover a lot. So, you know, for those of you on a time crunch or you know, you would rather kind of get that summary or cheat sheet sheet of everything I'm going to cover today you can click that button that should pop up in the top right corner of this video or go to the link in the description of this video let's dive in all right folks so here I have a pretty blank chart now I do have these lines drawn out but this is something that I've you know kind of stripped away something that I already utilized now for me as a day trader there's multiple time frames that you could utilize now ultimately let's start with the time frames number one scalpers i think are better on a shorter time frame a one two three minute chart if that's too much noise i would encourage you to use something like a three to five minute chart now what that really does is that it's going to look somewhat you know aggressive back and forth but it'll be a lot slower than the the you know constant new candle buildup that's going to take place here on the one minute chart so this is something that you as an individual will have to work on for me i'll actually veer back and forth depending on the market conditions usually when things are a little bit more choppy and a little bit tighter i'll go on a smaller time frame to try and get in and out really quickly or scale in and out but when things are trending and running well i'm looking to kind of kill the noise keep it slower, trust the actual advent of the trend and the continuance of the trend and kind of build out from there. So let's start with what kind of chart you want to use. Uh, some people prefer candlesticks. Now, respectfully, I totally understand there's a whole different type of methodology built around candlestick formation. So some people may gravitate towards that. Uh, just so you know, I don't use candlestick formations. I know the bare basics of them. It's not that I discount them. For me, whether it's a bar chart or a candlestick, that's really going to be dependent on what fits your eyes best. Uh, I have people that absolutely love bar charts more than uh, candlesticks and vice versa. Whatever is going to be pleasing for you. From a longer term perspective, quite honestly, I like the bar charts. But for day trading perspectives, I like to use the candlestick. Now, on Thinkorswim, you could see that in the top portion of your chart you're going to have this little beaker symbol that is a shortcut to the edit studies and strategies chart now if that's a little bit too difficult you could always right click go all the way down to the bottom where it says studies on that secondary pop-up window click edit studies and you could get there the same exact way now for day trading, I actually do like the moving averages. Now, whether you want to use the simple moving average or the exponential moving average on this time frame, they're pretty much the same. What's really notable is the time frame settings that you're going to choose. So let's use the exponential moving average. So on Thinkorswim, you type in moving a and uh, maybe not. Let's go exponential. There you go. You could just type in exp under the studies tab to the far left and you can see moving average exponential so what i want you to do is click on it once twice three times and then four times so now you can see there's going to be four exact okay indicators on the same time frame now to uh get to the settings of the individual one you can see that there's this little gear wheel you want to click on each individual one so let's keep the first one. I like it to be a little bit faster. So I like the five EMA. Uh, let's color it whatever you like to designate it. In this instance, I'm going to use a, let's use a little purple line right here. The secondary one that I want you to use is going to be on a 20 time frame. So you can see that I just deleted the 20 or the nine and replaced it with 20. And we're going to label this one as orange. Now, I like them to be a little bit more clairvoyant, so I'm going to change the width to make it a little bit thicker. And then we're going to click OK. So now you can see I have a 20 on the close. You can see I have a 5 on the close. The third one, we're going to delete and utilize the 50 time frame. 
again, I'm going to change the width. And let's change the color on this one. Uh, let's make it a little fun here. Uh, let's make it peach, okay? There you go. Uh, if there's too close to the orange, we'll definitely change that up. And last but not least, I'm going to delete and use the 200. And again, we'll change that. And again, we'll make that a little bit of a lighter blue. So let's take a look. If we hit apply, all of a sudden there's our moving averages. Boom. Yeah, that, yeah we could change that peach one really quick here. Do, 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 do. Uh, what stands out? Green. Okay, so uh, we'll apply that, and you can see the difference here, okay? So now we got the basis of these moving averages. But frankly, you don't even have to use these as well. So in theory, I like the crossover idea ultimately, but you do not have to have all these. Sometimes this is too much noise. But what the texture provides is a little bit of context and a little bit of structure. You can kind of see when stocks get above key levels, they could look to bounce, and they could look to run. Now today, quite honestly, a lot of choppiness in the market, slight trend down overall, um, hasn't been the greatest of market conditions to trade. Now let's pull up the VWAP. Now the VWAP for me is the most, day, most important day trading indicator that I use. Now the VWAP, I actually like the current settings. The only thing I wanna do is change the color. So as you can see, it's already set at minus 2.0, plus 2.0. Number deviations down, number deviations up. Those are 2.0 standard deviations from the volume weighted average price. And you can see what the volume uh, weighted average price plot is. You could always definitely look into this. And the time frame is day. So it only starts, uh, well, it could carry over from the following day, but it really starts collecting the data from the first trade that, you, that is taken in the pre-market um, hour time frame. So it could be as early as like five o'clock Eastern uh, up until the last trade of the market, which is usually around 7 p.m. Central Time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the VWAP. Again, I'm gonna change the width and I'd like this to be a little bit more easier to see. We'll just make it white so it stands out. And then the upper bands. So the upper band at the very top, I like it to be red. The lower band, I like it to be green. Now we'll do a little bit darker here. Again, you press OK. Again, the settings are already preset, so we definitely just want to use it to work in the color. Now, if this ultimately is too much noise, what we could do is start taking away the exponential moving averages. But I promise you there is a rhyme and a reason for everything that I utilize here. Next up will be the linear regression. So you just type in L-I-N-E-A-R, Lima, India, November, Echo, Alpha, Romeo. And I like to choose the first option on Thinkorswim, which is the linear regression channel 100. Again, same thing. The only thing that I want to change is the middle plot. The upper linear regression, the lower linear regression, we could keep it at whatever color we like, uh, color that we want to work with. Uh, let's do those as the peach. Those would be easier to see. And then in the middle, again, let's make it a plot that is going to stand out for us. Um, we'll just pick this color right here. And again, I like the width actually to be a little bit thicker, and this is important. So now as we hit apply, you can see that we now have the linear regression at the very top here and the top here. And then you're going to notice this color here. I probably should change that. Let's make it stand out just a little bit more. Now, these aren't my normal colors. I just wanted to showcase them so they'd be a little bit more of a standout. Let's make it dark blue. And that'll pop a little bit more. Okay. The last one that I use is going to be the ATR trailing stop. This is absolutely a darling of an indicator. Now, if anybody knows me and have heard me work with this indicator, you have heard me suggest that this, a trailing stop, 
is the greatest day trading indicator or just in general technical indicator that I have ever used. So what I am changing the time frame of the ATR period is to 21, make the factor 4.0, leave it as modified, leave it as long, leave it as wilders. Now you can make these a little bit thicker, but there's no need. Again, keep the colors the same. And then let's hit apply. On the bottom, I like to use the RSI. I like to use the preset of 14, 70, and 30. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward, nothing to uh, change besides just to add, okay? And then when it comes to volume, you're going to notice one thing. I'm going to write down volume or VOL. And what I want to use is the indicator called volume average. So you could actually type it out in full after you write the word volume. Type in the letters AVG and it will show up here. Add the selected. And the volume average is set over 50. That's absolutely fine. Now, if you want to change it and how it's visually looked at, that is no problem. Some people like it as a background. That's what I generally like to do here, have it a little bit as a background, and you'll see exactly how that works. So now I hit apply. You could see, right, this, uh, I should probably change that background on the bottom. It's a little too bright. Uh, we'll make it a little bit more respectable to see here. Now, if, as I was saying, if the moving averages are too busy, right, you could always delete them and just utilize the other tools. But there are trade setups that uh, utilize the moving averages, which I'll talk about in a second. So right now, what I'm going to do is YouTube set, right? And we'll save that, and I'll show you how to grab that in just a bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is delete those four moving averages, okay, hit apply, and then go okay. So now, let's take a look at our situation and how things are structured. So as of right now, quite honestly, I'd actually be looking for a short. Now, the context of why I'd be looking for a short, I don't know what stock this is. This is Tesla, so it really doesn't matter. I know that people are too married to the name, and they always want to just buy it or sell it in certain circumstances, but let's have a rhyme and a reason. The number one reason in respect is going to be price action. Now, let's talk about the utility of these indicators. The volume-weighted average price, which is this white line, I'm just going to draw it really quick. This tells me a lot. Structurally, what we want to do is be aggressive buyers, right, when the stock is above the VWAP, which is that white line, and aggressive short sellers when it is below that white line. Does that make sense? We want to be bullish on the stock above, meaning aggressive bullish. Aggressive mean we're going to attack aggressively. We're going to go after the price points, even near highs, uh, when it is above the VWAP. When it is below the VWAP, VWAP, we want to be aggressive short sellers. So now this really takes the thinking process out of it, right? Should I buy or should I sell? The structure in itself is kind of telling you how the stock performance is relative to the market sentiment, relative to the stock sentiment. And because performance is weak, because the distribution of volume is basically anchored at this VWAP, and now we're seeing the stock underperform that anchor, that generally tells me we should be thinking bearish in the short term. Remember, with day trades, we're not trying to buy and hold it all day long. I, certainly, there are going to be some opportunities where that is going to take place. Those are going to be best on trending days. But on days like today, we're just looking to be opportunistic for very short term, sometimes in minutes, in and out. And, you know, if we're trading options, for example, and we short at the VWAP, which is currently at 199.82. And on this little knockback within the last three minutes, it worked a full dollar down. Well, if you bought an at the money call at the, or sorry, at the money put at that time, that is one full delta. So if you have one contract, let's say delta is at 52 cents, you just made $52 on that contract in three minutes. Now, I don't know what your job is, but if you're making $52 every three minutes, you may not need to trade much. You're making good money. But if you're not making that type of cash in that time frame, 
and let's say you decided to take three contracts at that moment, that basically equated to $156 in three minutes just like that. And more importantly, you are able to pinpoint the moment that you should be looking to attack that breakdown of the VWAP. Now, I'm actually going to be in this situation seeing that it's starting to bounce back up here, folks. Really looking to see if it's going to come back to the VWAP and break lower. In these instances, we now have structure on how far we could see the stock really work towards. One of the problems that I get from a lot of new traders is they could take the trades, but they don't know where they should take profits. The VWAP also offers a great structure in that kind of context. The second standard deviation is widely known as a great reversal point. You could see it. Anytime we've touched up on these levels, we've had some pretty key reversals, even in light volume situations. And yes, we saw that expansion. But yes, if you notice, look at how we got knocked back here. And as it started to rise, we saw that it started to expand very quickly. Look at how it got knocked back here. And early on, notice that it kind of dipped and pulled out of the VWAP and immediately got sucked in and turboed out. That was a reversal there. So ultimately, folks, if we bought at the VWAP and we started to see it rise, we know where our target should be. It should be at the high of the day and or the second standard deviation. Now, does that mean you automatically have to close out? Of course not. There are things known as cover and run strategies. So for example, if you had 300 shares, you could take 200 there and move your stop up to break even. And then if it's really strong and it starts breaking out, you at least have 100 shares still left over. And you could also always add on on the breakout or on the breakout and pullback. That may pull your cost average higher, but nonetheless, you'll still be in profit territory. It's the same thing as well. If you have multiple contracts and you decide to take a little bit off, you obviously can let the other contracts ride out and make some profits in the meantime. So now let's take a look. As you can see, we're starting to bounce back. If we actually see Tesla react, which it's starting to do, okay? And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, Candlestick traders, you can see that there's a little bit of a wick and look at how that body's starting to drop. Maybe it's a coincidence that we're starting to see some active traders here at the VWAP. But again, we're not saying those sellers are successful. However, if it does trap and work lower, we could actually see this work our way to the downside. Now, the question is, what happens if it gets back above? Well, we've seen the situation as well where it got back above and then ripped up. We call that price acceptance. We certainly have seen that there's been a lot of activity, a lot of tails and a lot of wicks centered around this price. So we don't want to overthink it, right? If we see it get back above this level and hold support, perfect. Remember, stock above the VWAP, aggressive buy opportunity. If it's rejecting here, Think of that as being the cap on the stock price. If it can't go any higher, well, what's it going to do? It's either going to go sideways or it's going to go back down. And if you think about it as a trader, you're thinking, oh, it can't go up, so it must go down. Well, how would you trade that? Well, on the option side, you would buy puts or you may actually just rip it in with equity and look for a short. How would you trade it at the VWAP? I mean, quite honestly, guys, you could short right here and then have your stop just slightly above. Again, if it gets above the VWAP, it's most likely going to start working its way up. So this turns into a low risk, high reward variant, because if it does turn down, this is your potential reward all the way back down to this level. The laws of attraction, as we say. So we were just going to write down reward. Wow. I it's hard for me to use this mouse, not my desk, but that's your reward. What's your risk? Your risk is right here. So you can see that the reward far outweighs the risk in this situation. Now, the stock is up. The markets are down quite a bit right now. But if the market continues to work lower, well, we could see Tesla start working lower as well. 
as you can see, shockingly, we're starting to deflect down. Now, this is also, in turn, follow through from a sharp reaction from this blue line. This blue line in utility is almost the exact same as this, where these are drawn out second standard deviations. The linear regression is basically checking in relation to the stock price performance in recent trading sessions. Basically, it's telling you the price performance and how it's been. You can see that the linear regression just slightly is tilted up, but fairly flat overall. So it's saying that the overall progression of the stock has been slightly bullish, but overall fairly neutral. Well, let's take a look. And this isn't just today. It's in reference of the last few days. If you notice, Tesla, for the most part today, is pretty sideways. Now, this is extremely important because day traders know there's some resistance here, some resistance here. And if we see risk off at those levels, that could be a reason for short sellers to jump in. But you're going to notice that if we clear above these levels and immediately hold, that we could see a little bit of a propulsion on the buy side in the near term for the stock to go higher. Now, I also want you to always cross-reference with what the market is doing. It's going to be very hard for a stock to go down if the overall general markets are starting to rally up. As you can see, the NASDAQ here, or the Qs, have started to hit a reversal of trend off the lows. We have been working our way down since the open here, and most notably, the trend line has been very weak and then you have now seen that the trend has transitioned. So ultimately, it's going to be very difficult for a stock like Tesla to continue to break down while the market is rallying. But yet, notice it's still deflecting. So this is a bit of a make or break. The most aggress aggressive traders are going to already jump in and anticipate that we're going to work lower because the initial reaction was down. I'm not there. I usually like to give up a little bit of my profit potential to kind of get that qualifier, to look for that lower low reversal, meaning the next candle starts breaking down and working lower. Very simple. It's just in relation to how these red candles have traded. They went to lower lows and they started working lower. And so because of this situation, we know that A, the overall structure of Tesla has been pretty weak. B, that we're starting to see resistance coming down with the stock price. And C, we know that the markets are working higher, but Tesla is not. So this is an important factor here, folks, because now we're starting to see Tesla deviate from the broad general markets. And that also means that if the market starts to turn down, that could actually be an accelerant for Tesla to start going lower. Now, what do I mean by that? There's a rhyme and a reason. This is the rhyme and this is the reason. If you are unsure what support and resistance is, some of this may not make sense. But if the clarity of resistance is a fixture in your trading vocabulary, meaning you understand resistance, you understand what stocks may do at resistance, then you completely know what this VWAP is currently providing. Now, very quickly, folks, if you're unsure of what support and resistance is, you should associate the word support with the word floor. Floor holds us up. Imagine if we started walking and the floor disappeared. What's going to happen to us? We're going to drop like a rock. Resistance has to be associated with the word ceiling. Obviously, that's the cap. We can't go any higher unless we go beyond that ceiling, right? Let's say we lose gravity. We're in our living room and we start floating up. And we're now sitting here bumping up against the ceiling. If the ceiling disappeared, guess what? We're now bumping into the roof. If the roof disappeared, guess what? We're now headed to Mars. This is an important understanding because if we could recognize these moments, we could also recognize trading opportunities. 
as a scalper, what if I told you you had an opportunity of shorting an exact price, let's say one ninety nine eighty one? you only have to allocate around 25 cents of risk, meaning if it goes up another 25 cents from that price, you should be exiting. And then what if I told you you have potentially three, four dollars to the downside? Or you could just play it for a one dollar swing. If you're risking 25 cents to make one dollar, that's a three to one reward to risk ratio. Is that gonna be good enough for you? Same thing, if you take 100 shares, that's 100 bucks in your pocket. You take one contract, that's one full delta at the money. If that delta is 52 cents, that means it's $52. The more shares you have, that's the multiplier on what your profit potential is. So as I have stated, it is looking weak. When I first started explaining this, I was talking about bearish thesis. How did I know this was going down? So here's a few clues based on the technicals that I'm utilizing. Again, the linear regression mean the volume weighted average price. These are important levels. Intraday wise, they could provide texture like support and resistance. And you may say, look, they traded through these levels back and forth. You're right, they did. So that's when all of a sudden they react to these levels. That's when that little light bulb clicks that we have to pay attention. But there's also another factor here that told me that I should be looking more down than up. And that's what these pink dotted lines are. As I have stated, this is the greatest indicator I've ever worked with. It's a trailing stop. It's known as the ATR trailing stop. Now I have other videos and other information out there where I break down what the ATR stands for. You can easily follow it up, but ATR stands for average true range. This is important because this means that these stops are basically understanding the stock behavior each individual one. The easiest route to success is to join in participation with the market as opposed to against it. It's that thesis, right? That theory. If you're stranded in the ocean, your best way of survival is swimming with the currents and not swimming against it. I mean, even triathletes will struggle. Now, in overall context, of course, if the market gets extremely bullish, that could change the overall perspective. And just because these are telling us to be bullish or bearish does not mean we only have to trade that way. There's other variables that are going to come into play where it's going to lead to bullish opportunities. I don't want us to be just, you know, pinholed saying we should only short, we should only short. Remember, this is telling you what your thesis should be, but let's not forget the overall context of the market. So now let's talk about when stocks are above the VWAP and stocks are below the VWAP. Remember how I had stated that if it's below the VWAP, we should be aggressive bearish. If it's above the VWAP, we should be aggressive bullish. But in the same sense, folks, there's also a thesis in this uh, regard as well that we could be passive bearish and passive bullish. And what does that mean? So in turn, if we're looking to short a stock, a common sense will always generally state this, but we should try and buy as low as possible and we should try and sell as high as possible. A great point of looking for reversals are going to be at the second standard deviation. Now, ultimately, folks, I'm going to point out a different stock here. Let's go to Amazon and take a look where we could see these reversals take place. They won't always be big. And in fact, some of these may give off reversal signs that could be head fakes. So we always want to look for proper reversal signs, whether it's candlestick formations whether it's higher high or low reversals, like in this instance, like in this instance as well. These are things that I'm always looking for. Just because we get that reversal candle with a higher high doesn't necessarily mean we're going to reverse. I am a true believer in looking for a retest on those levels and getting that confirmation. Otherwise, folks, anytime we make a new low and just bounce immediately, I just want you to understand all that means 
is that the, that is a short covering rally. Those are shorts closing out their positions and then buyers immediately jumping back in really quick for a quick scalp up. But they'll eventually get faded off very quickly, especially if the market conditions are bearish. What we want is a visual representation of a true reversal. If a stock is working down and trending down, it's making lower highs and lower lows. So what happens when we start making higher lows? That doesn't fit the definition of a downtrend. That fits the definition of an uptrend. Well, what's the opposite of a downtrend? It's the uptrend. So if we're getting higher highs and higher lows, we know that the market is actually trying to work the stock higher and not lower. So that's where that confirmation comes into play. If you've ever tried to catch the bottom and you're like, oh, it looks great, it's going to reverse, and you've gotten stopped out, that's probably why. Because just because we make a low and we spike up doesn't mean it's a reversal, folks. Keep that in mind. I don't care if it moves up $5. It's a short covering rally. We're always looking for confirmation. Notice the two that I pointed out. Beautiful reversal signs. Also, hopefully you guys are watching this. Quick quiz. What's that white line? What does it represent? Let's take a look historically here. The last time Amazon was at the VWAP, what happened? The last time Amazon was at the VWAP, what happened? And once again, history is repeating itself. Now, the stop did flip again, but ultimately, nothing remains bullish until we get above that VWAP. This is why we want to be passive bulls. If we're going to be buying, right, we want to buy in at reversal plays off the second standard deviation. Let's buy low and then write it up. So in this situation, let's talk about the context of where we could see the stock go. Now, just very quickly, folks, if you actually like what you're hearing so far and seeing how this is now working in relation to how we have just pulled up these indicators, and right now we are trading live. It is 11.36 a.m. Central Time. So we are in the thrill or the throng in the middle of a trading day. Do me a favor, folks. Comment, like, and subscribe, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you a few times throughout this video, but I want to make sure I prove my worth to you. I want to show you why these indicators are so powerful. And really, it just provides texture, structure, context, a plan. This is so important because this is the major pitfalls for new traders, even veteran traders. Again, people never have a problem buying or shorting a stock. They just don't know what to do afterwards. And that's where I'm trying to help you folks here. So take a look. What do you think, folks, in this situation? Look at the timestamp on the video. Are we going to go lower in Amazon or are we going to go higher? Comment down below right now. Now, as I get back to what I was saying, if we were buying in at the lows, folks, let's talk about structure in this situation. A great reversal sign, beautiful entry right here. Where should we ride it to? Well, if your answer in the comments is going to be here, ding, ding, ding. Number one, you know where your first profit target is. If Amazon clears the VWAP and gets above, we know that it's now starting to get very bullish. Our upside target is always going to be a reversion back to where it got knocked back from. But ultimately, I think our designation, again, is back to the highs of the day and the second standard deviation. If you folks actually paid attention when I was breaking down Tesla, I actually mentioned that. Working our way back up either to the highs of the day or the second standard deviation. And if we go beyond that level, home run. Now, let's talk about the flip side. Let's say some of you are like, oh, I'm short. I just got short of the VWAP. Where should we actually anticipate where we could go to the downside here? If you shorted Amazon, let's say at $100, the VWAP's at $100.23. Now your stop's at $100.30. So you have a 30-cent risk parameter. Where could we go down to? 
if you folks have answered down to the lows of the day or the second standard deviation, ding, ding, ding. Truth be told, you could just scalp it, be in and out. This late in the day at 1139, I'm not expecting huge moves. Maybe we need something that could kick us off and that's possible. But what if I told you 57 winners only? Wallet patterns right now. So this is where I wouldn't say be greedy, but this is where you kind of want to let it work out and see if it's still working within the context of the current of the ocean, which is obviously the market trend. If we know where the possibilities are, if we know what our outcomes can be, it makes a lot of sense. It will give us conviction to hold. It will allow us to maximize gains. And that's the thing, folks. That's another hiccup that I see a lot of people do. They tend to hold on to their losers too long and let go of their winners too early. If you have had struggles, especially as a day trader, in reversing that process, something like the VWAP will automatically just totally change your mentality and more importantly, work on that psychological aspect of holding on to your winners better and letting go of your losers quicker. Again, if we read the VWAP properly, and if we're short and it's starting to break above these levels, there's no reason, because now you're getting into hope and pray. And we know that the trading gods sometimes don't want to listen to us, right? We don't want to rely on hope and prayer. Let's take the proper information, the proper context, and absolutely crush it, okay? All right, folks, so if you actually like what you're seeing here, you actually want this setup, do me a favor, comment down below that you want my trading layout. And if you do, I'll actually send it out to you. How about that? You don't have to create it yourself. I mean, you can. I gave you the instructions on how to do it, but it's not always the easiest. It's not really, you know, something that a lot of people are familiar with. So I could actually send you a TOS link where it'll automatically populate and you'll have this chart. All you gotta do is ask for it down below in the comments. And again, if this is something that you really, really, really happen to like, of course, and this video is going long, don't forget to actually click on that banner up top and grab your cheat sheet. That way you could kind of get that little gist, that little breakdown, the cliff notes of what this video is about. Uh, for those folks that are wondering as well, uh, I actually send out a daily watch list on stocks to watch. So if you actually want to know what could be the potential big movers, um, in recent sessions, I called SWKS, made a $7 run intraday. We basically got all of it. There was a run in Tesla where we broke 168. I called 180 to the upside. You could actually just look. It happened about a week and a half ago. We actually got it. I still think that uh, NVIDIA above 205 has a chance of running to 229 here all the way up to 231. Again, another call. Shopify through 50, potentially up to 60. If you like calls like this, right, you want to know what the next pumper is going to be, what could be the mover of the day, how to play it. For example, another one that was on my watch list today, ENPH. We had earnings. First thing I said, folks, is that if it opens below a specific price, which is 249, and we start seeing a breakdown, any new breakdown of the lows today, we're going to see it absolutely tank. Well, for those that are wondering, we went basically from 247 down to 214. So if that tickles your fancy. Then I want you to comment down. I, uh, down below, I want you to click and get that cheat sheet. I want you to ask for that watch list or click on the, the link in the description below to get that uh, cheat sheet and that watch list sent out to you here. Guys and gals, if you don't think I don't know what I'm talking about, then you could click off. But if you want to learn more, stick around. Now, as we look at EMPH, say you ended up missing that first initial drop, but you notice that it's weak that it's not holding the upside momentum that it had uh, garnered in pre-market. You can see where it jumped up from. We're lower than we were yesterday, FYI. Then just remember what I was talking about here in the near term. Look at this strong reaction at the VWAP. Remember what we said. If a stock can't get above that VWAP, aggressive bearish, 
Well, at that moment, the stock was currently trading right around 231s. About 30 minutes later, it got down to 216s. Again, I'm not sitting here saying you're going to get bomb outs like this every day, but clear cut and extremely predictable. And where did it go? Look at where it bounced from. Look at where it dropped back down to. Remember what we had talked about with designated targets, why structure is important. Easy peasy lemon squeezy to the upside and the downside, predictable outcomes. Now, I want to talk about here the bottom indicators. The RSI is going to help us with a lot of little texture and context as well. So let's look at Microsoft here. Microsoft was up on, you know, the Bing slash chat GPT news. And you could see that at that moment, and I'm just going to circle these and then point directly up, that the RSI was above the top yellow line. So a lot of you are generally familiar. If you know the very basics or you just started doing research or even the veterans, most people are pretty familiar with the RSI. If you're not, it's an indicator that tells you when moments of that stock is overbought or oversold, meaning it's overcooked in one direction or the other. And it's a warning. It doesn't automatically mean that we're going to see a reversal. But it's warning you that a potential reversal is coming into the picture. Now, if the RSI is above the top yellow line, which is at 70, okay, this is a metric of 0 to 100. If it's above 70, it's telling you things are being overbought. It's a little bit overheated to the upside. Start looking for that reversal to the downside. And if we get into that lower tier here, it's basically saying that it's oversold, it's overdone, and now start looking for the reversal. The slope of the RSI will also give you directional movement, meaning if it starts sloping down, it's anticipating that it's going to work lower. If it starts sloping up, it anticipate, anticipates it's going to work higher. Case in point, just like with stocks, when we start making lower highs and lower lows, that's that divergence. And you could see at the peak, we started seeing the weakness. And as it started to slide, even at this moment right here, if you just look at my crosshairs, folks, it was already saying it's still overcooked, even though we came off the highs. And sure enough, right here, folks, this is important. You may not notice it, but Microsoft actually got under the VWAP and went straight down to the target. Came back up to the VWAP, went straight down to the target. And as we started descending, we're still working lower. Finally, it started to look like a potential reversal. Look at that higher low reversal. That's that low. That's a higher low. It's creating a W formation. And if you want, if you actually look on our Prosper Trading Academy channel, I actually have a video covering the W and the M formation as a reversal sign. Stay tuned and you can look into that video after this one to look for that reversal formation. So we started seeing it, folks, and you can see that we started hitting higher lows. Now remember what this blue line is. That's that linear regression level, that mean. This is important because this is structured. Just like with the VWAP, when we're above or the uh, we're above the linear regression mean, just like we're above the VWAP, that generally gives the thesis of being bullish. Underneath, it's bearish. So you could see now Microsoft got under it for a bit, but look at how many times they are now holding this level and starting to deflect away. Yet again, now we're starting to see the floor come into play. Now, if the floor is coming to play on the stock, well, it's the same thing. We could only go in two directions. We could only go sideways or we could go up. If we break through that floor, we know what's going to happen. Just like if the floor got pulled from uh, underneath your feet, down we go, guys and gals. So again, 
if all of these indicators for you to build on your chart is very difficult, like I said, comment down below. We'll throw you the link and we'll make your life a lot easier. If you have interest in knowing not only the stocks that are going to be moving, but how I am viewing these stocks, right? We're going to have this kind of idea of what could happen. And then we start going into fruition. The only thing that's left is for you guys to trade in accordance. And you want all that information, guys. You want that cheat sheet. You want that watch list. Do me a favor. Let us know. We want to know. And again, if you like the video, if anything that I have said has made sense that could provide some context, hopefully, I am truly hopeful that this is going to help you folks. Let us know. Click that like button. It's only going to help us here. This is free. Free 99, folks. Now, let's get back to Tesla and Amazon. So let's look at Tesla first here, okay? What has the outcome been? It still remains choppy. Still barely getting above the VWAP, but yet to cross over this level and the dots remain pink. Now, it's not really a great trading opportunity overall. We know structurally what's happening, but we know where it can't get past and we know where it's not getting below. Amazon, in the meantime, though, is starting to show bullish signs of life. Quite frankly, this is now showcasing that this was resistance turning into support. If you folks ever want to know something that's going to be considered bullish, remember how many times I had talked about Amazon getting knocked back at resistance, right? And now it's being utilized as support. So I promise you, we break this level, you're going to see Amazon work towards this level, probably around 101 here. I can't guarantee it. Maybe I shouldn't have said promise, but that's the general outcome. That's the thinking here. Now, remember, above the VWAP, we want to be aggressive bullish, right? Oh, what are these little dots? Are they blue or pink? They're blue. You know, folks, I can only prove it to you during live trading. And again, if you're not sure if this is live, look at the time frame here and look at the date. I wouldn't be lying to you. Now, let's look and see if it gets to that progressive upside. Because if it does, I'm sure it's all going to look smart. And more importantly, you're going to ask, how did I know? And the truth of the matter is, I don't know. There's nothing that I know for certain. But I'll have a lot more conviction in trading a specific way, seeing certain outcomes play out. This is going to be important. Remember, context, structure, gives you a lot of texture here. It provides this information. And if we read all this information correctly, what we're doing is swinging the odds in our favor, right? The, the probabilities of success increases. We're not guessing here, right? This may be known as calculated risk, but we're not guessing here. This isn't a guessing game, folks. We're reading and registering the health and the demand in the market. If the demand's on the buy side or if the demand's on the sell side, we want to trade in accordance. And surely we may be wrong. But we want to be wrong in situations where we have little risk allocation versus trying to hold on for dear life and taking on big risk for small reward. Remember, we want to change that. We want to get bigger reward, smaller risk whenever possible. Ride out the winners, right? Close out the losers quickly. That's the true success. In that instance, folks, we could actually trade at a less than 50% win-loss ratio and still be extremely profitable. You can literally lose 7 out of 10 times and make money. Why? Because you kept your losses small and you wrote out your winners. Keep it simple, guys. Keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things. Now, we're getting to a point where things are getting heated, but we know that volume is starting to kick in. Now, I haven't touched up much on this, and I definitely want to touch up on the crossover next. But notice that volume is starting to kick up. The average is highlighted by this gray background. So you can see that the average come, has come up, but the overall uh, volume has really fallen flat off of that level. So what we want to see, if we're going to have true follow-through, is volume start kicking up. Really, we want it to kind of kick up above that upper threshold. Nothing would be more bullish than us to hold and spike up again here. Like I said, markets, hopefully you can make me look smart in this situation. This is going to be important. 
a lot of context and texture, but most importantly, the trading opportunities and having success with them. So what I'm going to do is go back here. Remember, I typed up U2 YT set, the YouTube set. Now, for those that want to know how to add that over, what you could do is after you've completed and created your algo or your indicators on your chart, make sure you click on that button, save as a set. If somehow everything gets erased or you work on a new computer, you could always salvage it by saving that set. Because once that happens, take a look, guys. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove all and hit apply. Now, you notice all my indicators are gone. Okay. Go to the left. You see that there's a tab for studies, a tab for strategies, and a tab for sets. What I'm going to do is highlight the YT set or standing for YouTube set. I'm going to click on use set. Now, if you take a look all of my indicators not only populate but they populate with the saved settings all the settings that i had saved the colors that i have chosen are all going to be there as soon as i hit apply boom here we go now i hit okay i'm just going to bring this down drag this up sure enough you could see it here so what I look for with these moving averages is that these moving averages could provide some support and resistance, but it's really important on how we read these moving averages. Now, in fact, I am going to actually pull out, oops, I'm going to pull out the VWAP here, the linear regression, um, and then just make it a little bit more clear. So what's important in this situation? We always look at crossovers. The crossover is an important metric because that gives us an indication of price action. Remember, they're tiered at different time frames. They're all the same indicator, but they're tiered at different time frames. This little pink one that's really right in the middle of the candlestick, those are that's the 5. The orange is the 20. The green is the 50. And the blue here is the 200. If you're not sure, you can just see it right here. Blue the purple you can see how it's color coded and it's showcased at the highs and it gives you that time frame so this is important early on all the moving averages crossed over that blue line you can see it right here where we all crossed down and went below that blue line that blue line is kind of that baseline of price for the longer term okay the orange line is a baseline as well but nothing more significant than that teal blue line that's why i have it up there so the moment that you saw the 5 cross down and then the 20 crossing below the 50, that was a verification that it was weak and we should be looking short. Now, where's our ATR stop? Oh, it was pink at the time. So notice how we were thinking the algo stop was saying pink, and then we confirmed it with price action. It crossed below that baseline. That's another piece of information that said you should be bearish. The perfect opportunity was when everything crossed up and we had our first pullback towards that five. My entry would have been right off of this pink line right here, or that pink line that I've drawn over where that yellow X is, and my stop would have been just outside of where that green is. Now, you folks can use that ATR trailing stop, but I, only, I would only encourage you to utilize that to lock in your profits. You could also use the 50 and trail your stop in accordance to the 50 as well. And in fact, that means you would have been stopped out right here. This was the first entry or retracement once we crossed over. Boom, moving down. Notice it never crossed back below the 50. In fact, it rejected at the VWAP. You should have been holding because in anticipation, the stock is showcasing trend. Part of the conviction as well, folks, is reading how the performance of the stock is. So if you take a look, these are... Actually, let me label like this. The pink lines label the lows, right? The lows here. Let's just look at it like this. The yellow line is going to represent the highs, the swing highs. 
So, folks, if you notice, we have made lower highs just like we have made lower lows. Well, lower highs and lower lows equate to what? Trend. It's an important component. Now that we're starting to cross up, this was an actual good tactical entry buy. And in fact, that coincided with where the VWAP is. Now with me, I wouldn't have wanted it just because you're trading up to a key technical level, the 200 EMA at that moment. But I promise you, we break above that level, you're going to see that glorious sky. And in fact, I still see it because we're holding above that VWAP. We are getting top heavy, so it's not a surprise that we're slowing down. Remember, the closer we get to that upper yellow line, it's important. Notice how it's starting to show some divergence to the downside, a lower high and potentially a lower low. So it's starting to warn it may pull back a bit or reverse course. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go all the way down, but it's starting to say it's getting very top heavy. Let me now re-add everything. So let me remove all, use the set, click on it, apply, and boom. Now we look at it in correlation with everything, and now you see the full spectrum of how you can use the upside and or the downside. You know what's really important in terms of opportunity to keep an eye on and opportunities that you could take advantage of. And you also know where there may be some speed bumps on the way to your progressive target. And in turn, you could trade accordance. Nothing is guaranteed. Sometimes the market only wants to give you $20. So now I am pushing you folks. I am pushing you here as we wrap this up. I want you to go through these three steps. I want you to focus on comprehension. If this is new or things that I've talked about is giving you a different perspective of these indicators, let's talk about what I was saying here. It's all about comprehension. Once we understand what I'm talking about here, now we're talking about integration, right? Or I'm sorry, implementation. You're implementing it, you're gonna start developing it, you're gonna work it into your trading. And then, of course, after you folks have practiced, we talk about integration, working it as one of your uh, key components of your trading plan. I highly, strongly, screaming out loud, encourage you folks to practice with paper trades. Most people don't give a crap. They don't believe it's real, but I'm telling you, it's really important, okay? Would you let... A kid that is, I don't know, first or second day in medical school perform brain surgery to save your children's lives, to save your life? We know the answer is no. So then why would you try and throw thousands of dollars at risk right away after you've watched this video maybe once or twice? Practice makes perfect. Comprehend, right? Comprehend what I'm talking about integrate and then implement this is really important okay so watch this video bookmark it if you have to right if you actually comment down below with the timestamp you could always go back and that'll bring you to those moments that you find to be very critical and again maybe this video is too long so hopefully you guys you could use that cheat sheet and of course if you like the daily watch list to look for those movers guys Click the links below. You can get all that info for free. And if you're too, if it's too difficult setting up this setup or this layout or anything in that fashion, comment down. We'll send you the links. We'll do all the work for you. I hope this information provides a lot of texture and context. I don't want it to, you know, be confusing. Um, if it is, let me know. Again, I'll try and keep it as simple as possible, which is what I wanted to do from this video. The beauty of day trading is that you can make really good money in a very short period of time. There's going to be moments in the markets where uh, swing trading, holding overnight, is really where the sauce is going to be. But, you know, with the volatility and the pricing movement and the struggles and the kind of Jekyll and Hyde markets up 1%, you know, down 2% the next day, up 2% the next day, 
up to one percent you think it's going to go down and then it goes up another one percent then right when you think it's going to go up drops two percent if you're dealing with those struggles maybe day trading makes things a little bit easier get in and out of the market let me just point something out very quickly making one hundred dollars a day doesn't matter if you have a hundred thousand dollar count or a ten thousand dollar count hundred dollars a day equates to five hundred dollars a week five hundred dollars a week equates to twenty or two thousand dollars at the end of the month after the calendar year, that is $24,000. That means you could be making a 24% return on a $100,000 account or having a 140% return on a $10,000 account. And certainly, if you're having that consistent success, we could size up, right? You could start levering your positions. Instead of going for 100, you go to 200. Next thing you know, you're making $500,000 a day. So how different would your life be if you were making $500 a day working less than two hours, one hour, 15 minutes? I have, listen, one of my old clients, right? He's, he comes in all the time, but he's literally there for half hour a day and he's out the door because he's made one or two trades, made five to $10,000 and he's gone. And you're like, oh yeah, this guy must be filled with money. No, this, this gentleman is actually pretty young and didn't really start with a lot of cash, but learned, was extremely dif- uh, disciplined, went through big ups and downs until he found his way. And now he knows that he could just wait for his moment. He's disciplined. And when he has that sign, he attacks it without hesitation. He makes his money and he goes about the rest of the day. Listen, I'm a golfer. If I didn't have to sit here and run my trading room, guess what? I would work a half hour Go out and golf the rest of the day. Live in the dream, folks. And that's what I want for you, folks. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you heard, if you love the content, do me a favor. Click that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You're going to be supporting us so that we can bring more awesome content out to you that we can provide on YouTube. And hopefully it's going to help you trade. Again, if the videos are too long, you can always click that link. Get that cheat sheet. It'll give you that breakdown, that Cliff's Notes version. And, of course, you want to know what's moving in the markets every day. You want to find that uh, upside mover that's going to explode for 10 points or that dumper that's going to drop for 20 uh, sign up for that stock watch list. We'll be sending it out to you on a daily basis. Just want to say, everybody, peace and love and keep trading well. Until next time.